friends of mine from college. After coming back from the trip, I knew it was time to finally embrace adulthood. So I decided to make some changes in my life. One of them was letting go of my most prized possession, my old motorcycle. But I wanted to take one more ride before I put up my motorcycle, say goodbye to it with a bang or more like a trip down memory lane. For that, I thought I'd hit the long route and come back up on Bray Road, the perfect trip to say goodbye to my much-loved and trusty two-wheeler, and it was proving to be a great ride as always. The sun was starting to go down when I had just come up through the countryside. It was getting dark, but I wasn't really worried. I knew these roads like the back of my hand. But things started to look glum and took a bad turn when I looked down and noticed that I was running low on fuel. That was concerning to say the least. I didn't want to be stranded on the back roads during the night with no way to reach out to anyone for help. I was deep in my head thinking about what possible options I had and what to do next and I felt as if something big was running side by side, passing me. I looked down and saw I was going about 48 miles an hour. I picked up speed and looked over to my side and then up ahead to see what exactly had overtaken me, only to see no one in sight at all. The large figure had gone and disappeared from sight altogether. I started feeling uneasy at that. I'd heard tales about Bigfoot being spotted in these parts of the state. Now, I didn't know how much truth there was to those stories, but I didn't really want to find out for myself, especially being stranded out on the road in the dark. And I definitely did see something big moving beside me, that had now disappeared altogether, so getting goosebumps and unease and uncertainty was a given. As I came around the corner, I saw a large arm suddenly reaching out of the dark and coming towards me. I didn't have enough time to stop the bike and the collision that was about to happen. As expected, the arm bumped me square in the chest and pushed me off the bike. I fell down to the road, turning and rolling for a bit. It was a real nasty fall that definitely gave me many bumps and bruises. It also made me lose consciousness due to sudden pain and shock. When I finally came out of unconsciousness, it was to a very big werewolf standing over me, staring at me with wide, crazed eyes and open jaws. I could see drool dripping out of his mouth and onto my chest. He looked like he was very much ready to devour me whole, which may not have been very far off in reality, I realized. I squeaked in terror and tried to scramble away from the creature. He did not let me get away from him, though. It was as if he was just waiting for me to become conscious again, to make his move. He lunged forward and quickly grabbed me by the leather vest. He pulled me close towards him and opened his big mouth even more, showing his white fangs and the saliva gathered around them. I outright screamed at the sight, and then it all went black. I woke up the next morning, covered in blood all around my face and neck, all the way down to my torso, with a chunk of flesh missing from my shoulder and several other bite marks all over my body. I suspect I was left there for dead, But fortunately, I hadn't succumbed to my injuries. I gathered all the energy that I didn't even know I still had after all that had happened and forced myself to get up. I needed to get away from there as soon as possible, in case another predator decided to pay me a visit. I wandered back onto the main road, stumbling and swaying all the way. I had just enough energy to wave down a passing car and then I completely blacked out once again. The next time I woke up, I was in a local hospital with two officers staring down at me. It gave me a very unpleasant flashback of the night before. They took down my information, asking me about what happened and why I was out on Bray Road. I told them everything, from how I decided to take a ride through the countryside of town to how I ended up wounded. 
They weren't very inclined in believing that I had actually encountered a werewolf and survived to tell the tale. They also told me that they had not seen a motorcycle anywhere in the area when they had gone out on a search operation after I was found. I didn't let it get to me much. After all, I knew what had happened to me. Instead of focusing on anything else, I decided to focus on getting the treatment for my wounds and get better. After healing from my injuries, I headed back on Bray Road to try and find my bike. A little into my search, I realized that I was starving and I had to get something to eat. The hunger came on so suddenly, so strongly, I could not wait. I stopped by a local diner for food, but even after eating four plates of chicken and steak, I still wasn't full. My hunger just would not go away. Instead of feeling sated after the huge meal, my stomach started to rumble and I started feeling nauseous. I jumped up and ran outside, vomiting my food back up. The whole contents of my stomach were out on the pavement pretty quickly. It made my throat burn and itch. My eyes were also starting to burn as I looked up at the sky and saw the moon was uncovered by the passing clouds. Just then, I suddenly started smelling meat. The best kind ever. It was as if somebody nearby was cooking fresh steak. It made my mouth water. So I turned around, ready to enter the diner once again only to realize that the appetizing smell was not coming from the diner, it was coming from behind it. So I dashed over there and saw nothing but a couple making out in the back alley. There was no signs of meat anywhere, but the appetizing smell was coming from the couple. I just stood there for a second, trying to comprehend the tricks my mind was suddenly playing on me when suddenly my skin started to burn as if I was on fire, and my whole body started to itch as if it was about to burst at the seams. I looked up and saw a full moon glimmering down upon me. I ran into the woods trying to avoid the moon's glare, lest it kept burning my skin. I could feel my heart racing, my whole body tingling and vibrating with a weird energy. And just then... I started to feel my body changing, growing in size. I looked at my hands and saw them changing right before my eyes. Soon enough, my whole body had completely transformed into a wild creature. A creature that I had no control over. It was as if my body had a mind of its own, as if I was a mere bystander in my own body. My instincts were the ones leading me now. I was just a human soul trapped inside a huge beast. A beast that was very, very hungry and wanted nothing but nourishment in that moment. As the beast I was trapped in charged towards the couple I had seen earlier, ripping into them like a wild chainsaw, I began to taste the warm metallic flavor of blood in my mouth. Soon, there was only the beast taking the lead, and the human was no longer anywhere. The next day I woke up even farther into the woods, naked and fully covered in blood from head to toe. My hair was also drenched in blood and knotted up with pieces of flesh. I felt disgusted with myself and decided to clean and cover myself up before thinking of anything else. I started looking around and came across a cabin in the woods, so I took shelter within it. The cabin was still quite functional and had many useful amenities in there, along with some old but clean clothes. I cleaned myself up and got dressed, all the while thinking about what to do next. As I looked out the cabin window, I saw an actual Bigfoot staring at me. The sudden fear that came along with the information soon left when I realized I was actually a beast myself. So we kept staring at each other, not backing up. 
Soon enough, though, the Bigfoot let out a growl and moved on his way. I was tempted to follow, but I refrained. I had far more important things to focus on, like my future and what to do with myself now. Over the next two years, I learned many new things about myself. I was a hybrid of some sorts, a dog man, and there were others like me too. We had actually formed a pack, with me becoming the pack alpha, where I learned how to control other creatures of the forest. I also learned how to control and manage my hunger, also learning how to get food and whatever else I needed. I would sometimes hitch a ride just outside of town and lead them back to my territory for food as well as whatever supplies they carried with them. Mostly, I would only pick up passing truck drivers, but occasional backpackers were my favorite as they often carried useful shit. So, dealing with humans was not really my concern. But, sometimes, my pack did come across Bigfoot. He was the real competition I was dealing with in these woods. I knew I was an alpha dogman in my pack, but I was competing with the other alpha Bigfoot that hunted nearby. The competition between us came to a head one day when my pack found a passing hunter for our dinner. Just as I was about to finish off the hunter, the Alpha Bigfoot stepped out from the tree line and pushed me away from my prey, bashing me into the trees. I groaned from the impact and righted myself, only to see the Bigfoot advancing towards the hunter. I realized that he wanted to finish off the hunter and set his dominance on me, proving to all that he was somehow superior to me. I was furious at that. I snarled and charged at him, opening up my claws and whipping him across his face in one go. He growled in pain and lunged towards me again, trying to land a punch on the side of my head. I ducked and tackled his side, pushing him until he was firmly against a tree. He was practically roaring by then, mostly in embarrassment at being so easily bested. He took another swing at me, but before he could land the hit, I howled and punched him right in the throat. In that one swift motion, I ripped his head clean off his body. There was deafening silence in the forest after our fight had died down, only punctuated by my deep growls and heavy breathing, or by the sound of the blood gushing out of the Alpha Bigfoot's body. I raised the head of the Alpha, showing his clan that I had defeated their leader. There and square in a one-on-one -on -one fight. I could see them shrinking in on themselves and slinking away. Now, everyone knows who the strongest alpha is. My pack also took this as their victory over anyone and everyone in the woods and set out to further set our pack dominance. Months later, there were no more Bigfoot tracks found nearby. In fact, no Bigfoot was ever seen in the area again. Life was pretty good once again. Bloody, animalistic, and very, very gory. But still, we were the cause of the blood and gore, and not the victim, so I would take that as a win. We were the undisputed, strongest pack of the forest, no one was even up for competition anymore. Instead of Bigfoot sightings and tracks, the werewolves were at the talk of the town. People were slightly wrong in their assumptions, but who could blame them? We dogmen really looked like transformed werewolves. I would often go and hunt alone, like everyone else in the pack, but sometimes all of us would go and lure prey together especially on the nights of a new moon. It was like a ritual of some sort for us at this point. One such night when we were out on a hunt, we came across a guy who was fixing the tire of his pickup truck by the side of the road. He looked like an easy meal, just sitting there, completely defenseless. So we decided to take him as our dinner. 
we started getting closer to him, slowly, so as not to alert him to our presence too soon. But it seemed as if our efforts had been in waste as the guy did end up hearing us hiding in the woods. He hurriedly retreated towards the back seat of his truck and brought out a shotgun. This sudden appearance of a weapon gave us all halt before we could wrap our heads around the danger and think upon what to do next. He took aim and fired the gun. It hit one of my pack members square in the head, killing him instantly. We all stood there, saw him drop down to the ground like a dead weight, blood spurting and spattering everywhere. Seeing one of my pack members go down in the blink of an eye enraged me to no end. I turned towards the man and saw him hurrying to reload the bullets in his shotgun, preparing to shoot once again. I let out a furious growl, startling the man so much in the process that he panicked and dropped his ammunition. Without giving him any time to get his bearings back, I leapt from the woods and onto the road, right in front of him. He let out a shocked gasp and was just in the midst of a terrified scream when I bit down on his shoulder. I held his head in my claws and ripped his arm clean off. It let out a sudden rush of blood along with a strong smell that hit me at once, making me growl lowly in satisfaction. I lapped at his open wound, slurping and drinking the heavenly liquid right from the source. All this while, the man kept screaming and thrashing around, trying to get away from me. And that really started to annoy me. I looked up from my feast and into his eyes, growling and warning. And next, I was upon his neck, biting it and pulling his head right from the body. It gave way to a beautiful, crimson fountain of blood, warm and very, very tasty. As I was busy completely devouring my kill, my sixth sense started tingling, alerting me of a possible danger and urging me to be aware of my surroundings. I looked up and saw more cars were coming our way. Before I could completely come to my senses and get rid of the intoxication of the blood from my mind, I realized that there were dozens of vehicles, and they were all surrounding us. Soon. I could see a large number of police jumping out of those cars, with guns ready and firing, firing at me and my pack. I ducked behind the jeep of my kill, as it provided me some sort of cover from the sudden attackers. My pack, however, did not prove to be that lucky. Most of them were still out on the road, out in the open watching me, so they didn't have time to get to cover or flee from the shooting. They proved as good as a lying duck in the moment. Some of them did take advantage of the increasing darkness around us and scattered, ducking and dashing so as to get away from the firing range. I couldn't even let out a sigh of relief at seeing them get away from the danger and towards safety as I heard helicopters flying overhead, spotlights out and looking for targets. And they did catch their targets. And they weren't just using mere guns, but using some much more advanced technology than that. I watched silently, helplessly, as they killed off my pack with high-powered machine guns. Thankfully, they still hadn't spotted me yet. So as soon as they got a little further in their pursuit of the scattered members of my pack, I dashed towards the woods. Unfortunately, that's what tipped them off. They noticed me and gave chase. I could hear the crowd of cops following behind me, shouting at me to stop and firing. And soon, the helicopters started joining in on their hunt. Thankfully, by then, I had already run into the deeper parts of the wood, trying to lose them in the dark. Those areas were quite difficult to maneuver due to the densely packed trees. It was also not a commonly explored area, rendering the movement of newbies really difficult. But somehow, they still managed to not lose me in the woods or the darkness. While I was running and trying to get away, a different plan started forming in my mind. I was outnumbered, and that was the greatest disadvantage for me at the moment. They had the upper hand on me, 
so there was no way for me to fight them then and there and make it out alive. So, if I can't lose them, and I can't get away from them, I might as well just take them with me, because I could very well fight them on my own terms, on my own ground, or more appropriately, underground. I smirked as I realized just what to do with them. I was going to head back towards the old mines and lure them there. I was going to take everyone that was pursuing me with me. Now that would be the start of a different game altogether. My game. (laughs) They have no idea what would be waiting for them in these deep, dark woods. Yeah.